we have been receiving an abundance of artifact mods that have been beneficial in the creation of new and interesting builds for all to try, from the well-known Oppressive Darkness build to the underrated Volatile Conduction build. In today's video, we'll be going over the underused Guardian Angel mod that you can currently get from the season artifact and exploring the pros, cons and build you can create out of it. Before we head off, if you like the content and would like to support the channel, do subscribe for more content like this and be sure to leave a comment in the comment section for anything you would like me to cover in the near future. The more support we get, the more interesting and fun videos we can produce. So starting things off, the Guardian Angel mod is an artifact mod that appears every few seasons in the final artifact slot for your class armor and costs only for energy to equip. It can only be used with precision based weaponry such as scouts, sniper rifles, bows and linear fusion rifles. And upon precision based kills with these selected weapons, it can produce a healing orb on the body of the enemy. The orbs you get are the same ones you get when you have the attrition modifier on and starts health regen the moment you pick it up. It's not super fast or instant healing, but you're just your average recovery speed rate. Now this sort of mod will be useful when being used in PvE content where there are traps in place to lower your recovery speed, or if you're playing a endgame content with a number of mages and ultras with buff damage. The thing is though, this mod isn't bad, but it's not great either to use. From testing, it seems to have a very odd drop and unpredictable drop rate of activation. It can go from a low 30% activation rate to a high 70% activation rate, and this seems to fluctuate from time to time, which makes it very hard to find out what the percentage rate of activation truly is. In one gameplay for example, I was able to proc it every 3 kills, but in another gameplay, I was barely activating it at all. On top of the odd activation cost, it also doesn't seem to have any unique effects like the Lumina Hand Cannon and Benevolent Dawn Puck does. It can only be picked up by you and you only, which makes this usage even more lower. It only drops on the enemy's body, which depending on the activity can be risky to get for a little payoff. And overall is tied down to a ranged weapon, which doesn't make a lot of sense, as you can be at a safe distance with plenty of cover. This is just an average and quite honestly unpredictable mod that doesn't help in any sort of ways. I believe this mod hasn't been rightfully thought through nor tested because of how bizarre the mod works and how low of a payoff you get from it. Like if you truly want something effective and more better, use the better already mod or recuperation mod where both of them will start health regen instantly for picking up awesome of light is definitely the best way to go with since you can pair them up with a masterwork weapon and be guaranteed an orb of light all the time. The fact this mod barely works at times and the fact that you have to use a selected weapon to activate it shows that the idea Bungie had was good but poorly executed with little to no reasons of using it, since there are better sources of mods and weapons that can provide the same thing you want that the mod offers but better. Of course, the fix for this is pretty simple. All they need to do is increase the percentage chance for the healing orbs to drop for whatever it currently is, so at least 50% for example. So in this case here, all players can get a 50-50 chance of it dropping. This will allow the mod to work a lot more better in general to hide their content and make it viable to a degree. If they really want the mod to be more noticeable by all, and then the ability for all players to pick it up will make the mod highly used by endgame players, and specifically those that want to embody a supportive role for their team. These two simple changes can make the mod versatile for all with the payoff being massive for the constant stream of health regen being freely available to those in need. It would also mean they wouldn't need to change the weapon requirements to use the mod, saving the dev team more time, although it would be nice to see them make the mod more applicable for all weapons. But as it's unknown whether Bungie will update the mod in the future or not, is the mod worth using still? Well, no. With his low proc rate and abysmal health regen, you're not really getting a lot out of it compared to the likes of Oppressive Darkness on the Artifact mod. If you're still persistent on trying to make the mod work, then I have a build that you can use for both PvE and PvP. Here's a quick build I created around the mod just to mess around with it in both PvE and PvP. I am utilising the mid-tree solar for the warlocks for the healing grenades and having the ability to empower others while also using both the healing and empowering rift for further aid. On top of that, I'm using the Jade Rabbit Scout Rifle as it's the only Scout Rifle I've found that plays really smooth and has very strong aim assist, which makes it very easy to land precision shots from a distance. And then lastly, I have the Sanguine Alchemy Chest Piece for extending my rift duration, so I'm going to have longer healing or empowering this wherever I go. This is the best you can get with the mod currently and I would love to see Bungie do something about improving it, as currently where it stands, it just needs two simple changes to fully make the mod viable for content. 
for now i advise you to avoid the mod and spend it on something more worthwhile to invest in or do give it a try and see if you can make something out of it so if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on twitter to keep up to date with destiny content if you dig that type of stuff link is down below but once again thanks for stopping by and i'll see you on the next one